craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom, here's the reason why, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine unto them. Amen. What a powerful, powerful setting. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your word today. God, I pray that this word goes out, Lord, and does what you have designed for it to do, Lord. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. It's good to see Tony in the house of God. I'm excited for what God is doing for you, brother. Amen. And it is just the beginning. Amen. It's just the beginning. He's going to add on to what has already been laid in your life, and we are excited about that. Mm. I'll try not to be too long. <clears throat> Paul had a way of reaching uh, deep into his past and writing down his memories that he personally experienced. Whenever, whenever Paul wrote, <clears throat> he always seemed to reflect on his experiences. And so with every stroke of his pen, I can imagine as his words, as he penned his words, they were expressed, it expressed a mere reflection of his encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. You remember Paul. His name was Saul of Tarsus before his conversion. Now, mind you, Saul wasn't converted on the road to Damascus. He wasn't converted at his Damascus encounter, praise God. Damascus was his door of opportunity for repentance, amen. A few days after that, he would be baptized. A few days after that, he would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But before that, prior to his encounter with Jesus Christ, Saul, who was Paul's attitude, was as the scripture says, breathing out threatenings and slaughter. He hated the things of God, or at least what he thought was contrary to what God was uh, trying to express in the world at that time through his disciples, amen. This is how, in reality today, how the church, how the world sees the apostolic church of 2024, but you might remember in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, Saul of Tarsus, as he's traveling down the road to Damascus looking for Christians when he comes face to face with the Lord. This was Paul's real-life testimony when he met with Jesus, his experience that he experienced that day profoundly affected the listeners of Paul's presentation. It's not unlike, really, our testimony of how God has transformed our lives and what God has done for us, praise God. And in astonishment, Saul responded to the voice, amen, as he was laying on that dusty road, praise God. He said, Who are you, Lord? 
He didn't even recognize who Jesus was, praise God. Jesus had already suffered and died on the cross of Calvary, amen. And so Saul probably knew of Jesus, but he never knew who he really was because of his attitude. He had a form of religion. Yes, he did. He was raised under the greatest minds of uh, the rabbinical teachings of his day. Amen. But he missed his real opportunity years prior, amen, as he was growing up because of his hatred for, uh, for the gospel, and for what Jesus was, what, for what Jesus came to do. But when he understood his calling, when he understood the voice, when he understood who was calling him and the light that shined about him, amen, he didn't reject it, praise God. Matter of fact, Paul replied, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I realize that I've been fighting against you. I realize that I've been pushing you away, Lord Jesus. I realize that I've been attacking the body of Christ and so he responded with, what do you want me to do? And I think that's the question that he asked us today. What does he want us to do? Does he want us to hide within the church walls? Does he want us to leave the church building and not talk about our testimony? Not talk about what Jesus has done with us when he found us, praise God, when we should have responded, what do you want me to do, Lord Jesus? You see, God's encounter with Paul or Saul of Tarsus, amen, was not his salvation, but it, it was a form of his repentance. And God is always bringing us to this place, amen, where we come face to face with him and literally face to face with ourselves praise God God always brings us to a place where we have to look at ourselves look at our life look where our life has brought us to praise God and that's when Jesus says is that all you got I can do so much more I can do so much more if you will allow me to step into your life what a beautiful picture of God speaking in to a person's life and watching a transformation take place. We can envision a person experiencing God moving on their lives. God's presence shining on them. There they are half blinded by this glorious light. It's not that they can't see, but their vision is blinded. Their vision is limited. They can only see so much. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 25, we kind of read how Jesus stepped into this man at Bethsaida. The Bible says Jesus came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man unto him. You might know this story. They wanted Jesus to touch him. Jesus took the blind men by the hand, and the Bible says he led them out of town. He got him away from his circumstances of how he lived, praise God, and the voices that, that cried out, he's a blind man, he's a blind man. But Jesus wanted to release him, praise God. And so Jesus led him out of town. And when Jesus had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he could see. Wow. I ask you the same thing. Can you see? Is coming to church just an obligation, praise God? Is it just a religion? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you just been going through the motions, praise God? Or can you really see, amen? The blind man looked up, amen. And that's what happens, amen. When we look up, when we look up our vision, amen, it becomes clear, praise God. It's only when we walk around with our head down, praise God, where we can't really grasp what God wants to do in our lives, amen. 
Jesus touched this man. He had no vision, and then he had limited vision. And then finally the blind man looked up, and when he did, he was restored, and he saw every man clearly. Praise God. There's something about men and women that are willing to put their own selfishness aside and be a disciple maker. I'm going to say it again. There's something about men and women who are fruit producers, amen, praise God, that, that bring people to church, that teach them Bible studies, that watch them as God is transforming them, that bury them in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins, that pray them through the Holy Ghost. There's something that is said about individuals like these Praise God. Individuals that are not afraid, amen, to go out into the world, amen, and come back smelling like the world. Come back with men and women, amen, that have issues, praise God, and they want God to clean them up. Praise God. Jesus was a disciple maker. Jesus helped this blind man Focus, amen. How did he do that? He guided him, amen. He guided him from a place where he could touch him again, amen, and restore his vision, hallelujah. I think that's awesome, amen, where a man or a woman, amen, or even a child, amen, can bring somebody to the house of God and return the favor, amen, that God has done for them, amen. Sometimes, all too often, I think we forget, amen, we forget that we were in a world, amen, of sin, amen, a world of chaos, praise God, and so Somebody, amen, interceded for you. Somebody took the time to teach you a Bible study, amen. And we forget about that. We forget about the favor of God on our lives. We walk away from the provisions. We walk away from the things that we walk away from the love of God. You see, it was God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness it's God that wants to give us revelation of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Paul remembered his interview with Jesus Christ that day. The psalmist said it this way in Psalms 119 and 135, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statues. I want to learn from you, God. The only way you're going to learn from God is if God has an encounter with you, amen, and it's going to happen when you seek his face, praise God. When you get in your secret place with God, amen, he's going to shine his light upon you, and he's going to give you revelation, praise God, because he wants you, my friend, to return the favor. He wants you to go out he wants you to be his hands and feet. And Saul, unfortunately, amen, missed the mark like many do today. There's people in the church, amen, that live for God for 30, 40, 50 years. And praise God, they never lift a hand to teach a Bible study. They never lift a hand to help anybody out. God help us. God help us. Praise God. I don't ever want to stand in the presence of God and never have anybody, amen, that God has used me to help them find Jesus Christ, amen, to minister to somebody. And Saul, like so many individuals, have a zeal for God, praise God. But Saul misunderstood the Christian way because in Saul's mind, this teaching was contrary to everything he was taught. And so Saul apprehended. He apprehended and arrested Christ. Followers, And as Paul gives his account of his experience on the road to Damascus, this was a new day, a new way, a new beginning, praise God. Becoming a Christian, my friend, is not an easy road. It's not something that is done on the surface, praise God. It is deep, praise God. It is something, amen, that you got to dig for, praise God. When God created the world, he knew that taking a chaotic, 
chaotic situation, amen, could never be successful if it was going to be superficial. If it was going to be superficial, praise God. God knew, amen, that he had to plant some things. He had to take a seed, praise God, that contained life, and he had to bury it, praise God. He had to cultivate that land. He had to do something with that land, praise God. And then he had to watch it. He had to nurture it, amen. He had to develop the roots that were deep inside, amen, the earth, praise God. He, he, he kept his eyes on it. Colossians 2, verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with Amen. thanksgiving. You see, transformation is an act, and it it's an act of God that penetrates into the depths of man's beings, praise God. This change so moves Saul that he repeats this thought in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Because he says, if any man, that's you, and that's me. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation, praise God. And this is why the gospel, the, the death, burial, and resurrection is so powerful and so astonishing, praise God. The world was astonished. From what happened to Paul, praise God. He was a blasphemer. He was a killer of Christians. And so were you. We fought against the, the, the purpose of God. We went and did our own things, praise God. And a lot of times we didn't even know it. We were ignorant of God and what he was trying to do in our lives, praise God. And then when God brought us to the light, amen, when God shined that light upon us, amen, it caused us to look at ourselves, amen, to look at our condition, praise God, and to look at a holy God that was willing to receive us in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so the plan of salvation is so easy, it's so simple, but people get so confused because they think that they have to be somebody in order to receive this plan of salvation. You don't have to be anyone, my friend. You just have to be who you are and let God transform you into, into what he wants you yes. to be, praise God. And so there were so many people astounded by the transformation of Paul, praise God. They were, they were overwhelmed, amen. He was a man that was wild, praise God. He was a man full of chaos, full of hatred, amen, full of envy, praise God. But, but it didn't matter, praise God, because Paul, amen, he, he had a goal now. He saw the purpose of God. And so he now begins to Show us, Paul now begins to show us the condition of man without the effect of the gospel of man's life. Before this light, man was ignorant by nature, untouched by the gospel, praise God. Man was in a state of darkness, and he still is in a state of darkness. Why? Because he lacks spiritual knowledge. John chapter 3, verses 19 says this. It says, and this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth God, hateth the light, neither cometh to the night, lest his deeds should be reproved. In other words, the reason why sin is so rampant, amen, because they don't want God's word to reveal their condition, amen, their state of being, praise God. The more that they hide in the shadows of sin, the more they feel they have freedom to do what they want, amen. But the more that a man or woman, amen, looks into the knowledge of God, the more we see that our path, amen, our past was only chaotic and God only wants good things for us. Amen. It isn't that man is dumb or doesn't know anything because when it comes to worldly knowledge, mankind, amen, is not 
blind, amen. God created man, praise God, with a mind to think, with a heart to feel, praise God, and a will to do certain things. Look at modern inventions. We look at our, our iPhone, praise God. It's, it, it, it's, it's crazy. You take this back in the 70s, amen, and they would, they would just be so overwhelmed. You have a computer in your hand. You can go on the web and you can, you can do research and you can do all kinds of things. The downside is it's so in, engrafted into our society, amen, that we can't even sit in a room, amen, without everybody in that room. Let's just say four people. They, there's no communication. There's no communion. There's nothing. It's just this. It's just this. There's no, there's no relationship. It is, it has been hijacked. And if man was left to himself, his life, his life would be a dark, chaotic mess, praise God. And that's what the world has to offer. And the world laughs at the Bible. And the world laughs, praise God, at God. And every breath is with threatenings and slaughter. And the world believes that its ways are superior to God's ways but that isn't the way that it is. Sadly, man goes about his day and never looks at himself for he stumbles in a state of darkness, spiritual chaos, praise God. He's always stubbing his toe every time he walks in darkness and he can't figure out how to get out of this mess. You see, he wants to be good. But he only gets worse, praise God. And the saddest part about this whole scenario, amen, is he can't do anything about it, praise God. He doesn't have the power, and that's why the Holy Ghost is so important, amen. That's why you cannot have a church, amen, without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, because it's the power of God to help you stay out of this chaotic mess that the world is trying to integrate into the church. People try to blame their condition on their past. They make statements like, you don't know my childhood. My family didn't treat me right. I had it rough. We all had it rough. We all came out of a world of chaos, amen. Those are excuses, amen. Psalms 80 and 3 says, turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. And so the word of God really is the only hope that we have, praise God. Once we see the light, how do we as Christians live in victory? Do we hide? Paul says in Romans 6 and 17, and this is, this is the key. He says, but God be thanked. Number one, Thank you, Jesus. God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, praise God. There was a time, amen, where we, amen, didn't have God in our lives. We were servants of sin. We didn't know any better until he struck us down on that road to Damascus. But he goes, you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine or standard of teaching which was delivered you. You see, many of us have experience, have an experience in God, but that doesn't complete God's plan for you. God brought us into this marvelous night, praise God, but there's another kingdom that fights against us, that opposes this, this kingdom of light, this other kingdom tries to besiege you, praise God. He besieges you and he deceives you with his cunning devices. He allows things, he, he brings things into your life. He speaks through your mind, amen. It affects your heart. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, 
rulers of another world, praise God. We are not of this world, amen. We are children of God. We have a place called heaven that we're all going to go to, amen. And Paul said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom Satan, the devil, the the accuser of the brethren, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who, by the way, is the image of God, should shine unto you, amen. You have to understand, friend, Satan can transform himself into an angel of light where thoughts and ideas and the things of this world look good to you and they look satisfying to you and they look awesome to you. But if you don't understand what it is or where it's coming from. He will catch you unaware, my friend. You, my friend, will one day be without God, praise God, because of our own desires, amen, because we put God on the shelf, amen, because we serve God through religion, amen. You can't serve God through religion, friend. You've got to serve God through relationship. That's the only way that you can have communion with somebody. Romans 6, 17, amen, again, we thank God that we were servants of sin, that, that, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto us. Paul said that you were, everyone say, I was. You were servants of sin. You were, everyone say, I was. You were in bondage, amen, but not anymore. Thank God, amen. You obeyed, praise God. There's the will. You obeyed. There's the will from the heart. There's the emotions, amen, from the doctrine which was delivered unto you. There's the mind or understanding. Paul is talking about a Christian life. He's talking about a whole life. He's talking about a balanced life, amen. And when God reveals this unto you, amen, you need to return the favor. See, if a person doesn't understand what he's been taught, he can become unbalanced, amen. He can lose his equilibrium, amen. His, his mind, amen. It can be distorted, amen. And everything that comes into his mind, amen, is going to affect, amen, the way he feels, amen, his heart, amen. And he's going he's gonna to walk differently, amen. He's not going to walk according to the ways of the Lord, amen. I'm telling you, don't open yourself up to the world. Don't open yourself up to the ideas, amen. You get connected with God. You stay connected to the source of God. He's given you the keys, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we fail sometimes in people, the world, they fail to grasp the meaning of the word of God. Some people see the gospel as a way to have their sins forgiven, and that's all, praise God. Maybe they just want to feel good, and they stop there. These people eventually become unhappy, amen. They grope and complain because they have to go to church, amen. They have to do this, or they have to do that, and on and on and on and on, praise God. Where's your joy? Lift up your head. Let God touch you again. Let him restore your vision, praise God. Walk with confidence in God. Walk in confidence with God. Don't be unhappy. Be thankful because you're part of this glorious kingdom of God. Paul was a master of circumstances, amen. Whatever he went through, praise God, he rejoiced, amen, because he was worthy to be accounted to go through these things. He understood the eternal significance of everything that he did, amen. Everything that he become, praise God. Others did not understand this, praise God. They only knew him as Saul, amen. And they were, they were amazed at the transformation. They were amazed at his life change. They criticized him. 
They laughed at him. They did everything to Paul that they're doing to you, praise God. But you need to stand firm. You need to be rooted and grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't misunderstand what God is trying to do for you. You see, this gospel is not a partial gospel. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's a belief, praise God. A belief is it's a lifestyle. The gospel is meant for every part of your life. You can't pick and choose what you want. The gospel deals with the whole man, praise God. If you only want one part, you're going to be unstable in the other part. Your equilibrium is going to be off track, amen, and you're going to be off balance, and you're going to fall. You're going to get dizzy, and you're going to bump your head, praise God. And when you bump your head, amen, you can't really think straight. That's why he gives you the helmet, the breastplate, the, the, the feet sod with, with the gospel of peace. That's why he's given you these tools, this protection. But if you don't wear it, if you don't activate it, praise God, your, your life is going to be a mess. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, doctrine which was delivered you. Jesus had a complete life. He was perfect. He was balanced. Colossians 2, 8 and 10 says, Beware lest any man spoil you. He wants to take your spoil. He wants to take what God has given to you. He wants to take, he wants to contaminate your provisions that God has given you. He wants to take the fruit of the Spirit, amen. He wants to take the characteristics of God, amen, that God has placed in your life. He wants your spoil. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Vain deceit, emptiness, after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world. Rudiments are things that are developed, perfectly developed principles, but when it ties to the world, it's imperfectly developed principles. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Why? For in him who, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That means the Father's in him. That means the Holy Ghost is in him. That means he is the Son of God. That means he is the manifestation of the true and living eternal God. And when you have Jesus... When you're connected to him, when you're in union with him, praise God. The Bible says you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. A truth must be first, Sister Tamar, come on up. When truth is preached, the mind is challenged. When the mind is challenged, the heart is affected. This causes movement of man's will. The heart and the will is never to be approached directly, praise God. Uh, uh, praise God. They must be influenced by understanding God's light, amen. If the heart and will is approached independently, amen, you're not going to grasp the full meaning of what God is trying to do in your life, amen. You're going to be confused, amen. You're going to be tossed in a world of chaos, amen. But I'm telling you, friend, fall in love with Jesus, amen. If any man responds to the truth, amen, he will never lose heart. Your foundation will be firm, praise God. And you will have understanding. Not just understanding, but great understanding. I want to have great understanding, praise God. I want to be a pillar in God's temple, amen. I want to be part of God's temple, amen. I want to return the favor. I want to return the favor. 
God, use me to return the favor, Lord. God, you've shown favor on my life, Lord, when you filled me with the Holy Ghost, God. Don't ever let me withhold that, Lord Jesus, but put me in a position, God, where I can be effective, where I can make myself available, God. I don't care if I'm a fool for you, Lord. I don't care if I stumble on my words, Lord. I don't care if my messages make, don't make sense sometimes, God, because of my inadequacies. But I'm willing. I'm willing to go through it, Lord. I just want to return the favor. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Why don't we all stand and let's